Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to a video that I was not originally planning on making, but this all spurred from a really fun bookish craft night I did on my channel a couple weeks ago with my booktube besties Gwen and Jessie, where we all went live and made these mini book ornaments together. I've seen this craft floating around everywhere, TikTok, Instagram. I've seen friends on Facebook do it, so not at all an original idea, but I think this is the cutest way to like commemorate your reading within a year and and I think I've come up with a really good and efficient process of making them and I wanted to share it for anyone else who might be interested but has no idea really where to start or how to make something like this. Like I mentioned, Gwen, Jesse, and I did go live and do this on a live show together and in that video we did walk through all of the process steps for making the craft and we also talked through things that each of us did a little bit differently and I think that's a very important point to make about this craft is that it's highly personalizable, not only in the books you're putting in here, but also how exactly you do the craft, what supplies you have available to you, etc. So you can absolutely go back and watch that live show if you want to hear how each of us did it at that time, and also just have some fun hanging out with us and doing some crafting sprints. I will also try to mention as many of the modifications you can make or different ways you can do it throughout this video, but will primarily be showing my most efficient way of doing this. So let's talk about what you will need for this craft. The first thing you will need is obviously the ornament. You will need clear, empty ball ornaments, or you can get the ones that are like skinnier than a ball, like they look round from one direction, but skinnier in the other direction. As long as the top opens up and you can have the opening, let me focus on here so that you can put stuff inside the ornament. It can be any shape you want for the actual ornament. For the round ones, I have seen this version where you pull off the top and then can put it back on. They also make a kind where the middle basically like snaps open into two halves of a circle and then you put things inside that and then just snap it back together. Either type works. The thing I will say about this kind is that for me at least with the size I made the books, once I put these mini books inside that hole it is kind of hard to get them back out. So if you foresee yourself wanting to kind of try things out and be able to put things in and take things out easily from your ornament, I would recommend the kind that kind of snaps fully in half because that's way easier to shift things around inside the actual ornament. I ordered my ornaments from Amazon. I think I ordered a pack of 12. I have the size, I think it's like three and a half or three and a quarter inches in diameter. They make them bigger, they make them smaller, totally up to you what size you want to get. I will talk about what size I made my books and how many fit inside of an ornament, but they just come, you know, wrapped up in a big box like this. If you order a bunch of them, I think you can also get them from craft stores around this time. The next thing you will need is all of the book covers printed out on either regular paper or sticker paper. I highly recommend sticker paper. It is much more expensive, but makes this craft way easier. <laughs> if you use regular paper, you will also need some kind of adhesive, whether it's double-sided tape or a glue stick. So as far as printing out your book covers, let's talk through the process of doing that and a couple of tips that I have. The first thing you're gonna need to do is save all of the book covers that you want in a folder on your computer. The easiest way I found to do this is to go on Goodreads and open up a list of all of the books. If you're doing all of the books you read in a certain year. Have that list open. Open each of the books in a separate tab. That way you're not going back and forth and having to continually scroll back down that list every time you're going for the next book. On that new tab, right click on the cover image, hit save as, make sure you save it in your folder, name it whatever you want. I found just numbering them to be the fastest way to do it because I didn't need to keep track of the titles or anything like that. Uh, and also don't worry about opening the book cover to make it the highest resolution possible. Obviously these book covers are very small, so it doesn't need to be a super high quality image for the general aesthetics of it to work. So then I would just go along and save a bunch of the book covers, go back to the master list, scroll down, open a bunch more, save them, and eventually you will have a folder on your computer of all of the books that you read in a certain year or whatever grouping of books you're wanting to do. Then for getting those book covers on a page, you can do a couple of things. One is to open up a template that Gwen has actually created that has the grid of book covers that you will fill up. You'll basically just insert the picture of a book cover, resize it to fit one of the rectangle boxes on that template, repeat it for all of your books. I found that to be a little bit time consuming and not super fun to have to actually manually resize every single book and like fit it to the grid lines perfectly. So what I did instead was go to my folder on the computer, select every single book and drag them into a Word document. And then one by one, I clicked on the pictures 
hit the format button where you can see the dimensions of the image. I changed them all to have a height of one inch and then hit enter. And all that does is make sure every single book has the same height. If you look really closely, you might see some covers that are skinnier than others, but to me that's fine. And the one inch height did mean that the widths would still be thin enough that they would fit inside the opening, but make sure you keep that in mind as you're doing this. The opening of my ornament I think is three quarters of an inch. So all of my pictures, I just made sure they were like 0.7 of an inch or smaller, and that was really not a concern at all. You will also need two copies of every book cover. You can do this one of two ways, you can put them side by side on the same sheet, or you can do what I did and just print two copies of your book covers. And this actually works really well for later in my process to do it uh, on two separate pieces of paper. But I know a lot of people do it side by side so that they know they have two of every book. They don't forget, they don't lose them. They are right next to each other on the sheet of paper. So once you have all of your book covers on one sheet on your computer, you will print it out again on regular paper or sticker paper. And then the next uh, piece of supplies you will need is foam. This is just regular like craft foam, really thin. If you don't have foam, there is another way to kind of replicate the look, which I will get to in a later step. But this is going to be the inside of your mini book that looks like the pages that goes in between the two book cover images. So now that you have your printed out book covers and your foam, you are going to start cutting these out and assembling your miniature books. Let me talk through my process, which I think is the most efficient way to do this. If you have sticker paper, you are going to peel off the backing of your entire page and stick it right on your foam sheet. If you don't have the sticker paper, you could do this with adhesive. Just put glue on the entire back, stick it directly to your foam. Then you are going to cut out the horizontal rows of books. Since all of these are the exact same height, you should have no problem cutting straight across and not cutting off any of the tops or bottoms of any books. I recommend doing this with scissors. You can use like a paper cutter, but my type of paper cutter that I have really squishes this down and so it would like crease the foam weird. When I tested it, I do think the type of paper cutter that you like lift up and chop down would work just fine if you happen to have one of those or access to one of those. But scissors works perfectly fine for this part of the process. It's very quick. You will also still have your other sticker paper with all of the covers. You will now cut this into strips the exact same way. Leave the backing on the stickers so that you're not sticking them to random things. But after you do that, you will have the one sticker paper already stuck to the foam with nothing on the back side, And then you will also have the plain sticker paper with the exact same covers. So if you put them on top of each other, they line up perfectly. And then what you're going to do is essentially flip the foam one upside down and stick your remaining sticker paper to the back of it. And that will make it so that you have the same book covers on the front and back. And yes, they will be upside down from each other. So if you flip it horizontally, the covers will be upside down. But here's the thing, when you have them all inside your bookish ornament, you are never able to see both sides of the same book at the same time. And they all get jumbled around and mixed upside down anyway. So I think it is completely fine to have them like this where they're just vertically matching if that makes sense. And then the last thing you're going to do is just snip the width of each book and you are left with your little mini books. Some other ways of doing this, if you don't have the sticker paper or the foam or whatever, in my opinion, are a little bit more tedious, but still work. You can of course just cut out your book covers and cut your foam to the right size and individually stick each book cover to the foam and back to back. I found it a little bit difficult to peel off the sticker backing of just the tiny singular book and it's much easier to peel off the backing of the entire strip. And similarly, if you're not using sticker paper, you're just using regular paper and you cut out each individual book and then apply adhesive to the tiny book. I think that sounds tedious and you do have to cover the entire back of the little book with adhesive to get it to completely stick to the foam. Otherwise the corners will curl up. So I do think that batch adhesiving is the key to making this a quicker project. Also, if you don't have foam, I have seen some people just take regular printer paper, cut it into strips at the right height, and then accordion fold it and glue the book covers to each side. And that will actually make it look even more like little book pages. It's just much more time consuming than using foam that already has that thickness to it. 
You can also use other colors of foam if you don't have white. My friend Jessie actually couldn't find any white at her craft store, so she ended up getting black. She's calling them sprayed edges, and I think that's awesome and would also be fun with any other color. It really would just look like colored sprayed edges to all your books. And yeah, I think that is all my tips and kind of different ways of doing it. It is a little bit of a tedious project. Obviously you're making a lot of miniature books and I think that that's part of it. You have to enjoy the process of doing a craft if you want to do the craft. At least that's my opinion. I personally really like repetitive, simple tasks. So that's why this type of craft is right up my alley. But I also know that making progress is motivating. So I wanted to introduce the most efficient way that I have come up with to do this craft so that you're not wasting hours and hours glue sticking tiny little individual books and there is a faster way, especially if you have lots of books to get through. I am doing my last four reading years. I have read over a hundred books every year for the last four years. So that's like 500 mini books that I'm making, but I really love it. Uh, I did mention I would talk about how many books fit inside of an ornament. So again, I think I have an ornament kind of on the smaller side at like three and a quarter or three and a half inches in diameter. And it has a three quarter inch opening. I made my books one inch tall by approximately two thirds to three quarters inches wide. And I found that I can fit right around a hundred books in an ornament. Because I have read more than a hundred books each year for the past few years, I decided to split that in half and basically do two ornaments per reading year so that there is fewer than a hundred books per ornament. And there is a little bit of space to like move them around and look at the book covers and just give them some breathing room so that they're not absolutely shoved in here. But if you want to jam pack as many books as you can into an ornament, more power to you. You can absolutely buy bigger ornaments than this if you wanna fit more books or make the books smaller. Especially with my method of doing this, I do think you can shrink the books without adding too much time to your crafting process. And uh, if you shrink these down, obviously more books will fit inside. But that is all I can think of at the moment. Please let me know if you have any questions, if you have tried this craft and have run into issues, or if you're looking to try this craft, but there's one piece maybe I missed or didn't explain clearly enough. I'm happy to answer questions here or on Instagram. I just think this is such a fun little craft to do around the holiday season. I think this would make an amazing teacher gift or a gift to a reader in your life. If you have access to like their favorite books or a school's book curriculum or all books in a certain genre, or if you have children and want to do children's books, or you could make this not bookish and put pictures of other things inside an ornament like this, the possibilities really are endless. And I am considering making some additional ornaments for gifts this year already, and I'm very excited about it. So please let me know if you plan to do this craft or if you've attempted it and had any luck completing it, or if this video has inspired you to try it because it really isn't that difficult, just a little bit tedious as most DIY crafts are. Oh, and I forgot to mention one final touch is you could absolutely use like a Cricut or Silhouette machine to print out uh, a decal that says like 2022 reading year or my favorite books or the person's name that you're making this for. Or you could use like a marker pen and just write on the outside of it and decorate it. You could also put other things inside to fill the space. You can tie different ribbon around like the top of the ornament. Let your creativity run wild, make it yours, make it personal. <laughs> I would love to see pictures if you've done this craft, uh, if you wanna post it on Instagram and tag me, or if you make it because of this video. Again, not at all my original idea, so I don't wanna take credit for inventing this. But now that I've made my own, I'm absolutely obsessed and want everyone else to make them too. So, okay, gonna stop talking now. If you have made it all the way to the end, I appreciate you, you are the real MVP, uh, but I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.